Uh, my name is Elena and I would like to share with all of you our experience working with uh, sensors and different programming languages and platforms while teaching science, um, physics, chemistry, biology. Um, our experience is very, very positive and we have uh, shared some low-cost sensors that we can use with different microcontrollers. Uh, that's, what, why, uh, that's why the title of this webinar is Sensing Science, because we are trying to teach science using sensors to carry out the different measurements uh, for lab activities. Um, Uh, some of the topics that can be taught using uh, sensors are, um, you have them in this slide, uh, so it's not only in physics, but also in chemistry, in environmental science, uh, in mathematics, biology, or robotics. And there are different topics that you can touch uh, using um, this strategy. Um, sorry. Um, here you have an image of different local sensors. Um, we suggest you start with the temperature sensor or humidity sensor because they are very easy to use and you can carry out lots of different activities just with uh, these two sensors. Um, some experiments that we would like to share with you and that we've carried out in the classroom with our students is, for example, in our chemistry classes, we use the temperature sensor to uh, find out if different reactions were endothermic, they absorb energy, or exothermic, they release energy. And you can see the final results in, in the graph in the slide. Uh, another very popular activity uh, that can be carried out using sensors is to build uh, your own weather station using different microcontrollers and different sensors. Um, last year, we carried out one of the activities that are, is, was published in the coding um, uh, uh, in the one of the materials that is in the website of Science on Stage about coding in STEM education. And it was to measure the humidity of the soil and to go to the plan in an automatic way when it was needed. Uh, we also um, carried down activity about radiation and we used a black and a white can with a a temperature sensor, and as you can see here, the temperature reached in the white can was 26.50 degrees, while in the black one, it was uh, higher, it was 29.56. Another one was boiling water, um, the boiling point of water and heating curves. And what we did we, is we used the boiler and the temperature sensor we did this activity using the Raspberry Pi and programming with Python. And as you can see, um, at the end of the experiment, um, the temperature was constant and it was very, very close to 100 degrees. Uh, you can also control uh, different electrical circuits using um, coding um, programming languages. Here in the image, we have two LEDs, a red one and a green one, that we control with a program. Uh, to study changes of a state, for example, condensation, you can use a rain sensor, which is a, a very easy one to use. So for beginners, uh, we recommend you to, that this is one of the sensors that you can start with. Um, one of the questions that our students tried to answer last year uh, was uh, what is the best soil humidity for a plant 
to grow healthy. And this is um, one of the activities that was published by Science on Stage as well. We did it with Microbit. You can also uh, build uh, your own robot. Your students could build their own robot. And I like this activity because uh, uh, they can explore their own creativity designing their own robot. And then they can decide which sensors they want to use uh, with their robots. So they have freedom, certain freedom, um, to decide which sensors they want to use. Now Beatriz is going to present you a coding water. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Beatriz and Elena and I together developed last year this, this, uh, this unit, Coding H2O, uh, which is uh, part of the coding and STEM education um, activity. And uh, I, I, in this activity, Coding H2O, the, the, the challenge given to the students was, it had two, two parts. The first part was to build and design, first design and then build a solar steel to purify water. Solar steel, something, this is one example, uh, where water can be purified using only energy from the sun. And the first part, as I say, is the, the design uh, to, they have to think on the different factors that affect uh, evaporation, condensation, and these things. Then they design the solar steel, they build it. And in the second part, they use sensors to test the efficiency of the solar steel, to test if their ideas um, or the previous ideas they had are right or wrong. So they can really check the different physical magnitudes using sensors. So um, the science topics covered in this lesson, they are very broad and they can very easily be adapted to different levels, different uh, students. For example, uh, one of the main topics uh, in this activity is changes of state, both evaporation and condensation. To purify water, it first evaporates, then condensates again. Another important topic touched in this lesson is about energy sources, the difference between renewable and non-renewable energy, energy sources. They can only use energy from the sun, so here they, they find the difference between these types of energy. Uh, they uh, as well work with infrared radiation, how uh, heat is uh, transported, transferred through infrared radiation from the sun and how radiation is reflected on certain surfaces. This is another important uh, part of this activity. And of course, um, working with mixtures, uh, what's the concentration, concentration of a solution, how they can separate uh, different, different parts of a, of, a, of a mixture. So as you can see, this lesson can be adapted to different levels, uh, different knowledges. And the, in the part of the sensors where they try uh, to, to test their solar steels, we used for this uh, activity, we use these four sensors. A temperature sensor, this one is a temperature sensor, a humidity sensor, a flame sensor. The flame sensor is used to measure infrared radiation to check uh, how they can place the, the solar steel to, to make it more efficient, and as well as a rain sensor to check when the first drops of water start to condensate. So these are the four sensors we tried in this activity. And um, the programming languages and microcontrollers used uh, can be uh, any of these. For example, for younger students, these first two microcontrollers are, um, are good for them because this BBC Microbit and Calliope Mini, both of them can be programmed using um, a block programming language, which is very simple for younger students or students that don't have a lot of experience in programming. So to start with these two 
Microbit and Calliope are very, very useful. But if you have students with more knowledge of electronics and programming, uh, we would recommend you either Arduino or Raspberry Pi, which uh, you can program using a text uh, programming language, which is better for advanced students. But again, as you can see, you can adapt it to uh, either younger or um, students with more knowledge of programming languages. So any of these can work with the, with the unit. And here you can see the, um, some pictures of the students preparing their building their solar stills after the research and design process. They build them. These are some of the final, final objects. This one, this is the most complete one here. Uh, I don't know if you can see here uh, to the left, we have a sensor connected to the microcontroller. And if you can, you can see this big umbrella uh, covered in aluminum foil because the students thought that using this uh, would concentrate the radiation from the sun easily. So the uh, solar steel would be more efficient. Hmm? So that was their idea. And uh, then uh, in the second part of the activity here you can see the students testing the different the different magnitudes they are here they are programming they are using well their laptops to program the sensor and here for example you can see if you are not very familiar with how microcontrollers work you see uh, these two boys are are testing the how how good if it's a good idea to use this umbrella so they are using they have here the the infrared radiation sensor the flame sensor so they have here the microcontroller and the sensor and they are connected to the to their laptop and here right now they are reading the amount of infrared radiation so they can compare the amount of infrared radiation received by the sensor using the umbrella and not using the umbrella and of course they reached the conclusion that the umbrella reflects a lot of infrared radiation and that is a really good idea to use this to improve the efficiency of their solar steel so as you can see um, they well they really had a lot of fun programming the sensors and you can see here the example of this is um, a temperature sensor connected to the microcontroller. This is an Arduino microcontroller. And this microcontroller through this wire, this just, is just an USB wire. It's connected to the computer where they were, you can read or they can read the value of the temperature measured by the sensor. Another example that you have, we have here is this is the humidity sensor. And uh, this is a bit more advanced, this project, because they have connected an LCD screen where they can read the value of the of the sensor, so they don't have to uh, to have the the computer connected to the microcontroller because they can read the value here in this screen. But again, this is a, a more advanced project, but it can be done very easily with the students. Uh, no problem with them. This, on the other hand, is an example of a very simple um, a microcontroller, the Calliope, and it has here the rain sensor. And as you can see, the connection between this sensor and the Calliope is very simple because it's done just with alligator clips, which for younger students works very, very well because it's very simple for them just to attach the alligator clips. And this, uh, this uh, microcontroller uses block programming. So this is a really, really nice sensor to start with. Another um, activity that we carried out after this uh, building and testing the solar steel was a science fair, well, small science fair, where the students uh, showed uh, to the other students in the school and to other teachers their findings and their, they explained uh, well how the sensors work and well it was a very nice activity and um, a closing activity for for that project and we were really 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 happy with the with the answer in the in the students so after introducing what can be done with sensors and um, how can it can be carried out in in, in a lesson the solar steel lesson uh, we want to show you um, a practical example 
well, actually two practical examples. Uh, first, Elena is going to show you how to program the micro bit for younger students. And then I will show you very briefly as well how to program the Arduino for more advanced students. So now Elena is going to show you how this micro bit works. Um, micro bit is uh, like a Leope. Uh, those are two microcontrollers that uh, you can use with your youngest students if they have no experience uh, programming. So it's um, I, I would recommend this too for beginners. And um, you can program the micro bit either with uh, blocks or with uh, text-based programming language like Python or JavaScript. So you can use uh, this microcontroller either with uh, beginners or with more advanced students. Uh, but we recommend you this one for beginners. Mm, here you have two links to the microbit website and to the microbit uh, block editor. Mm, in this website, uh, you can have lots and lots of different lessons and resources uh, already mm, uh, made uh, for you to use. Uh, and we're going to carry out one activity uh, using this website. So now I'm going to share with you one of the activities. Um, and we will use um, the make code editor, which is the editor that Microbit uses to program using blocks. Uh, these are the two uh, programs that we are going to create. Uh, so this is uh, just an image of the uh, final programs. We're going to use the temperature sensor and a light sensor. They are both built inside the micro bit, so you don't use to connect anything, any external thing, just to connect the micro bit to the computer. Uh, but that's it. Uh, the sensors are already inside the micro bit. You don't need to buy them. Um, you can, all, of course, use uh, some other sensors, but a micro bit comes with um, some already built-in sensors, and those are the ones that I, I would like to show you how to use. Uh, we will start with um, the temperature sensor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, share with you um, this website and uh, to show you how to create um, how to create the the program so as you can see this is the website of microbit um uh, what you will do is if you want to create a new project uh, you will click here where it says new project you can change the language. I have it in English, but uh, you can change it to uh, different languages in, in, in the settings right here, okay? And uh, if you move down, you have some tutorials and some uh, lessons already uh, created for you to use, but we're going to create our own one. So if you want to create your own project, uh, students will click on new project, and then you have to give a name to your project. For example, I'm going to name this uh, project temperature um, light. And then you click on create. And the block editor will open. Uh, when it opens, you have a um, different um, parts, different sections. Um, the interface has different sections. On the left-hand side, you have a simulator. So you can simulate your program using uh, the micro bit that you see on your left-hand side. We will do that in a few minutes. In the middle part of your screen, you can see 
the different categories of blocks. So if you click on any of those, you can select different blocks. So if I click on input, I can see the input blocks. You have some blocks for music, uh, some for uh, the different LEDs that comes with the micro bit, and we will use some of these. And on the right hand side is where you're going to create your program. Um, when you, when the editor opens, it, uh, you will always see two blocks on a start and forever, but you don't have to use them. So in this case, we're not going to use these two. On a start, uh, you can add there some blocks that as, as soon as the program is downloaded to the micro bit, they will run. And forever is the forever loop. It will run forever. But we're not going to use these two. So I'm going to throw them to the bin. So if you click on them and move them to the center of your screen, they will be deleted. Now we're going to start with the temperature program. And to do that, we're going to click on input. And for this case, I'm going to choose the on button A pressed, which means that the program is going to run as soon as we click on this button A to the left. Microbit com comes with two buttons, A and B. So uh, in this case, like I said, we're going to um, use the on button A pressed. And then we're going to create a variable. When you are programming with sensors, I always recommend my students to store the value of the sensor in a variable. So I always ask, the, ask them to create a variable first, to store the, the values of the sensor that they're going to use. So to create a variable, you come here to the category of variables and you can make your own variable. So if you click on make a variable, uh, you can create your variables. Um, a good idea and a good habit is to give the variable a name that describes what this variable is going to store. In this case, I want this variable to store temperature, so I'm going to name it temperature. And we use low case letters for variables. So uh, I always ask my students to use low case letters. So we create the variable, and now you can see some blocks already created here. Uh, so as soon as you create the variable, you have the set block and the change block. Uh, we're going to use the set block, and we're going to connect this variable with the value of our sensor. Now, uh, the sensor that comes along with the micro bit, the temperature sensor, you can find it here in input. So in input, you can have um, some blocks to create different events and also some sensors. You can have here the, as you can see, the acceleration and the temperature sensor and the light level sensor. So for this program, we're going to use the temperature sensor. So I'm going to move this block to the, that's our first block. And we're going to set the temperature sensor to the value of the sensor, which is uh, this purple block, rounded block that I'm uh, moving now. So what we're doing is we're connecting what the sensor is measuring to be stored to the variable that we name temperature. And then now we want to show these values through the micro bit. And to do that, we're going to use the LED matrix that comes along with the micro bit. So um, if you click on basic, uh, you can show a number, you can show icons, and you can show text or a string. So I'm going to use first a screen. Uh, by default, the, the screen is hello, but I want to t uh, show here T equal to, okay, because that's the temperature. And then I want to show uh, here in the 
um, lead matrix of my microbit, the value of the temperature. And to do that, I have to go to basic and then click, select the show number. Here, the first one, show number. <laughs> and then instead of zero, we want to show the value of the temperature. So we want to show uh, the value stored in our variable. So I'm going to click on variables and I'm going to select my variable temperature. I'm, I'm going to show the value of the variable as a number here on the screen of the micro bit. Uh, if you want to, you can uh, give um, a unit, for example, Celsius degrees. And to do that, if you right click on one of the blocks that you have used, it lets you duplicate the blocks. So I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to touch this block below. And here I can change. Uh, this uh, screen and I'm going to type C for Celsius degrees. And what I want to do next is another very useful block is the delay uh, block or um, pause block. Now here in Microbit, as you can see, by default is measured in milliseconds. So one second has a thousand milliseconds. So if I want uh, this value to be showed for, let's say, two seconds. I'm going to click here, 2,000 milliseconds. So now, now our program is finished and we're going to test it. Uh, there are two ways in which you can test your program. You can download it to your micro bit if you have one physically, but if you don't have one, you can use the simulator on the left. And I'm going to use the simulator on the left. Uh, we tried this, we used this a lot during the lockdown because our students didn't have the micro bit at home. So when we were teaching online, we used this um, simulator and it worked very well. So if you, um, if I click on the A button, which is the one on the left, I should see the temperature and the T equal, and then the value of the temperature and the unit, okay? And you can stop the simulator uh, whenever you want. So this is one of the programs that I, I would like to uh, do with you. And the other one is uh, to use the light sensor. Now, to do the second program, you could use a different file or you can add your second program here because we can use a different event. Uh, so instead of uh, clicking on the on button A, I'm going to use now button B. So if I go to the input, I select the same one, but then I change the A and I can select the B. And as you can see, you can also have uh, another event which is by clicking A and B together. But in this case, I'm going to click on B. And then I'm going to create another variable uh, as we did before. I'm going to call this variable light. This is going to measure the level of light. So as soon as I create the variable, you can see the two blocks here, the set block and the change block. So we're going to use the set block. And we're going to set to connect this uh, variable with the measurement of the level of light. This sensor is included in the micro bit. So it's built in the micro bit. You don't need to create any circuits. Uh, so to use the this light sensor, you can choose from the input category. And if you scroll down, you can see the light level. So this is our sensor. So what we are doing here, as we did previously in the temperature program, is to store the measurement of the light sensor to a variable that we called light. And now we would like to show the value of these uh, measurements. And to do that, 
we're going to once again select the basic blocks those are the most popular that the ones that we use the most and in this case i'm going to show just the number so i'm going to click here show number and i'm going to show just the measurement so um we need to show the value stored in that variable that's why we click on variables we click on the variable light and we connect um, to the block and now it's ready to run we're going to test this second program and uh, remember that in this case i have to click on button b which is the one at the right hand side of the micro bit so if i run the program if i click on b as you can see it shows here on the top left corner the value of the light level of the measurement which is 128 and uh, it's also shown in the uh, lead matrix in the micro bit and and that's it uh, we, uh, we have finished two programs and we have tested them in the micro bit if you want to if you had a real micro bit uh, what you can do is you can download if you click on the download button here the programs that we just uh, created into your micro bit um, so now um, we're going to move on to the uh, presentation we're going back to the presentation okay and this is what I, we just did. Um, there's another microcontroller uh, that Beatriz told you about, and she showed you some images, which is the Calliope. Is uh, it has some similarities with the microbit, uh, and it's very easy to use as well. And you can program it with a snap, uh, which is similar to a scratch. Uh, here you have another example of a um, program created with uh, the Calliope and it has also a, a simulator uh, the same way th that Microbit has. So it's very similar to use and very easy to use. And those two, we recommend uh, those two microcontrollers for beginners. And now Beatriz is going to present you Arduino. Thank you. Okay, so now for um, students who have um, some more knowledge of um, electronics, but anyway, it's not necessary. We, we use this as well with very young students, guiding them very, very slowly, and they use this without any problem. So um, this microcontroller is, uh, is very, um, it gives you much, many more uh, options. You can do many more things. That's why it's a little bit more complex. But uh, I will show you how easily it is to program this sensor, the temperature sensor. And the material uh, we, we need to use this sensor is, of course, the microcontroller, the Arduino. We need some wires, jumper wires, the sensor, of course. And we're going to use this uh, breadboard. Uh, this is not essential, but it makes it simpler to do the connections. So we are going to use it. And the, the workflow in this uh, using Arduino is as follows. First of all, in your laptop, in your computer, you write a program, a program like this, which is called a sketch in, in Arduino. Once you have written your program, it, you, then you uh, upload it to the Arduino. Uploading means, well, transferring it to the memory of the Arduino to which you have connected the sensor so you have the sensor connected to the Arduino. Now the program is in the sensor. And then you can read in your computer, you can read the values from the sensor. So that's the idea. First, you write the program, then you upload it to the Arduino, which is connected to the sensor. And then finally, you read the value of the sensor back in your computer. You can, as, as I told you before, you can use an LCD screen instead of the computer, but it's this way is the simplest way of, of, of doing it. So this is a sensor we're going to use, the LM35 sensor. 
And the way to connect it is, uh, as you can see, the sensor has three legs, number one, two, and three. And you have to connect leg one of the sensor to the pin in the Arduino, which is called five volts, which is the positive power supply. Then the middle leg is the data, the data line, and you connect this middle leg to any of these analog pins in the Arduino, any analog input in the Arduino from A0 to A5. And then the third leg is going to be connected to another pin in the Arduino to the ground, the negative power supply of the Arduino. So uh, the, the microcontroller is um, powered through one and three, and leg uh, two is used to read the values of the sensor. I'm doing this very fast because uh, explaining how this works, well, it mm, would need uh, just a webinar by itself. So just for you to get the idea. And we're going to use this breadboard to, if you didn't use it before, it's just a way of connecting wires. It has a lot of holes inside. It has uh, these wires. So it makes it easier to connect the, the, the sensor. So the final setup would be like this. This is the sensor. This first leg is connected through this wire to five volts. The second leg is connected to A0. We, I have connected it to analog input zero. And the third leg is connected to ground. So we have the, the setup. I can show you, uh, this is a camera. This is just the, the green, my breadboard is green. It has the, the sensor here. You can see it's very, it's very tiny. This is the Arduino. And with this, uh, this is just an USB wire to connect it to the, to the computer. So in the computer, you write this program. So this program is uh, what is going to, to, well, to actually read the value from the sensor. Uh, it has some, well, um, some instructions. It's not as obvious as you can see. It's not some, as um, obvious as the, my, uh, the micro bit, the block programming. But there are two values that are important here. The first one is the zero. This zero is the analog input in the Arduino to which we have connected our sensor. So if you have connected your sensor to uh, pin A5, you should write, write five here instead of zero. And the other value you may want to change from this program is this delay. Delay is the time in milliseconds, again, like before, between reads. So if you want to read the temperature every second, you leave it like this, delay 1,000 milliseconds, one second. If you can make the, if you want to make the measurements more often, instead of 1,000 milliseconds, just write five, 5,500, sorry, milliseconds or 300 milliseconds. It depends on how often you want to make these measurements. And with this program, what you have to do with the program is to upload it to the computer to read these values. Okay, so I'm going to show you very briefly how to how to do it in, in, in Arduino. I'm going to share with you the, the Arduino uh, programming environment. Let me find it here. So here you have, here you can see the Arduino environment where you can program. This is the program. It has a lot of more lines, but they are just comments. So, I can understand the program better. So you can see with this program, uh, I'm going to make the readings every second, every 1,000 milliseconds. Now, if I connect it, I'm connecting it to the, you heard the connection. And then I only have to upload the program. When I click on this arrow, this program is going to be uploaded to my Arduino. You can see here some messages. It's uh, compiling the sketch. It's checking that there are no mistakes, no uh, whatever. And when it finishes uploading the program, it says uploading and done uploading. So now this program is already uploaded to the Arduino. Now to read the values, I just have to click here on serial monitor. So you will see in real time the values of the sensor. So here, for example, you can see that every second, this is the value of the temperature, you see, 25 degrees. It's measuring it every five seconds. And now I'm going to touch it with my fingers 
the, the sensor, I'm going to touch it. So you will see that the temperature, it's increasing 26, 27, 27, 28. So you can see that tem the temperature increases. Oh, my fingers seem to be rather cold, only 28. It should go higher. But you can see that the temperature uh, increases from the previous temperature. Yeah, now I'm going to release it. Now the temperature sh should drop again. It's not dropping very fast, but you can see I'm going to make it faster. I have some ice here, so I'm going to put the sensor close to the ice, and you will see now. There, you can see that the temperature now it's going down very fast, 22, 21. So you can see 20, you can see in real time how the temperature is changing, okay? So, okay. Oh, made. Okay, so I think I'm back again. Uh, I don't know why it disconnected, but hopefully you saw the temperature rising when I touched the sensor and then going down again when I put some ice next to it and one of the nice things of this is that with these values the students can copy them into a spreadsheet where they can further uh, analyze all the data and uh, plot the graph and see how the graph goes up down and do any any further analysis that they want so um, as you can see, this is a, you can do so many things with this. It only depends on uh, what you want to do and on, well, uh, the, the topics you want to study. And you can as well, using Arduino, you could as well use block programming. Uh, you see, using the same microcontroller, uh, you can use, uh, you can see here some programs made with blocks, and here you have the reference. So if you want to, to use it with, in an easier way, you can as well use this programming language with blocks. But if you want to make more complex things, I would recommend you to use text programming. And with text programming, one last microcontroller that I would like to show you is the Raspberry Pi that Ellen is going to, to show you the program we did. Well, the Raspberry Pi is a little bit different because it's a, not a microcontroller, it's a real computer. So it comes with Wi-Fi, with Bluetooth, with a memory where you can store your your programs, uh, you can install things. Um, so it's a little bit different. Uh, it's also inexpensive and we recommend you to program it with Python. Um, which uh, for, in most schools is studied by, by students. And finally, we just want to show you some resources and websites where you can find more in information about the things that we have been talking. Um, but thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you. Thanks on the stage for making this platform and um, giving us the opportunity to share all these things that we are doing in our school with our teachers and so we can as well learn from other webinars and all your material which is really really useful for science teaching so thank you you thank you again <laughs>